We have all heard of secret societies that operate behind the curtains of everyday life. Organizations who teach secret knowledge only to those that are initiated. Knowledge so secretive people in search of it must take an oath of secrecy to learn it. Normally those who join these secret societies never speak about what they learn. Rarely do we ever see people admit their involvement in these organizations, let alone speak out about it. Fortunately, I found a person who was deep into a secret occult organization, and in a recent interview they did, she revealed how the devil led her into the world of the occult, eventually joining a secret society called the Order of the Golden Dawn. She also explains how God eventually saved her and got her out of that satanic lifestyle. Hey guys, I hope all is well. Welcome back to The Truth Is, where I drop new videos every other day exposing the truth. In today's episode, we will be talking about the story of Jack Marino Chen, a former occultist who was saved by God. Let's get right into it. On this channel, I have dedicated many years trying to show people the truth about the occult and its effect on our world. I have shown just how much the leaders of our world are involved in the occult and secret societies. I also expose the agenda behind these secret societies. One organization that I often expose is the Freemasons. The Freemasons are hands down the most powerful secret society alive today. They are single-handedly behind the creation of America and are responsible for this fallen world we are living in. In a way, the Freemasons are one of the pillars of most of this occult teachings. While most of the occult's teachings date back before Masonry was created, the Freemasons are responsible for keeping these occult beliefs alive and introducing them to a modern world. A lot of what's being taught through the New Age religions have been inspired by Freemason ideology. In today's episode, we will be looking at the story of a former Satanist occultist who joined a Masonic organization called the Order of the Golden Dawn. She participated in rituals and rose in the degrees only to find herself lost and broken, with only God himself being able to rescue her soul and bring her to glory. Today, we will be talking about the interview Jack Moreno Chen gave on Alice Beth's channel. In this interview, she tells the story of her life and how Lucifer had guided her into the world of the occult and how she was eventually saved by God. According to Jack, she was essayed as a child which affected her upbringing, making her attracted to the darker side of the world. By the time she was a teenager, she was starting to get interested in the occult and the supernatural world. This led her to joining an occult organization called the Order of the Golden Dawn. I have spoken about the Order of the Golden Dawn before. For those who didn't see that video, the Order of the Golden Dawn was an organization created by three 33rd degree Freemasons. The organization taught about ritual and ceremonial magic, also teaching about sex magic. The Golden Dawn was led by Samuel Little McGregor Matters, who ended up teaching Aleister Crowley about sex magic and almost everything he knows about the occult. Eventually, Aleister Crowley became the leader of the Order of the Golden Dawn, which he used as the basis to start his own occult religion called the Lima. Originally, the Golden Dawn was only for 33rd degree Masons. Now today, people may join without first being Masons, but essentially they become Freemasons when they join the Order of the Golden Dawn. The Order of the Golden Dawn teaches that man can become God by using the forbidden occult knowledge. So they practice strange disturbing occult rituals in order to unlock this forbidden knowledge and grasp a deeper understanding of it. It all connects back to Adam and Eve and the forbidden knowledge. In the Bible, we are told the serpent tempted Eve, tricking her into eating the fruit, telling her that if she ate from the tree of knowledge of good and evil, she would be as a god knowing good and evil. When Eve ate from the fruit, she willingly chose to disobey God and chose to become her own god. Essentially, this was Lucifer pushing self-worship all the way back then. This is what the Order of the Golden Dawn represents, using that forbidden knowledge to become your own god. This is exactly what Jack learned during her time in the Order of the Golden Dawn. Jack as a child had dealt with supernatural experiences that started after she was essayed. She felt that she was being visited by supernatural beings which she believed at the time were aliens. She felt that these supernatural beings that she believed were aliens led her to the sinful life she ended up living. Following these supernatural deities led her to the new age teachings like tarot cards which introduced her to Aleister Crowley. After joining the occult, she went on to learn that she wasn't being guided by aliens but by demonic forces connected to the very occult system. There until I I joined an occult order called the Golden Dawn where we practiced ritual magic in a Freemason lodge. And it was there that Jesus Christ met me in that darkness and saved me. I knew it was, it's kind of strange, but it was like every, the next thing would glow, physically glow. Because I was so out of my mind, um, I didn't know it was physical reality and what was just 
uh, me seeing things, you know, mm -hmm. that weren't really there. Mm -hmm. And so things would glow. I was walking down the street and I saw a Freemason lodge and that glowed. So that got me more into the uh, Masonic texts, Kabbalistic texts. I don't know. We, I don't really know what Freemason is, what yeah. Masonic texts are. So can you give us just a brief yeah. explainer? Yeah. So Freemasonry, um, I, I get a lot of pushback when I talk about Freemasonry. Freemasonry is for men. Uh, they do have other orders that I actually reached out to this Freemason lodge. It's, it's a, I think they would call themselves more of a fraternity, like a brotherhood, uh, but it is a secret society. Uh, Ultimately, I think that it has a lot to do with idolatry and Gnosticism, uh, but secret society. And when I reached out to them, they recommended me to the Eastern Star, which is their order for women that also goes into very secret, um, secret teachings uh, there. But the order that I ended up getting involved in called the Golden Dawn was started by three master masons and brought a lot of Masonic ideas and symbolism because Freemasonry can be very ritualistic and theatrical. Also brought in Rosicrucianism, which is another uh, philosophy, kind of taking, it's an esoteric philosophy. So I've heard it said that what Rosicrucians kind of think about or use as a philosophy, but the Golden Dawn would practice. So I ended up being led to the Golden Dawn, which took a lot of, really I ended up being led there because I saw these tarot cards that were glowing and they were the, ended up being the Thoth tarot deck by a man, Alistair Crowley, um, and he's known as the most wicked man to have ever lived. He is, uh, he actually popularized a lot of wicked things here in America, um, but... Like, like what? Um, well, bringing the occult over, but Alistair Crowley's uh, form of magic and was so gross, uh, a lot to do with the belief that sexual fluids have more magical power. Uh, is this sex magic? This would be, um, but he would even take that to nth degree. Uh, including children, very, very awful things that uh, are, are said about him. And, and he brought that here to the United States. Yeah, at least popularized it. Yeah. Um, and I believe he was on the Beatles cover, Sar Sgt. Pepper's Lonely Hearts Club Band. He's, he was very uh, pushed by the music industry at one point. So. Alistair Crowley, you said that's his name. You saw these tarot cards, tarot cards. Where did you see them? I was just at a metaphysical shop. Okay, you saw them, you felt like they started glowing. As you said, you thought that these entities were kind of showing you the direction to go, the things to buy, what to focus on based on glowing. You you saw the Freemasonry Lodge, mm -hmm. which was glowing. Mm -hmm. So you felt like, okay, I gotta go that direction. That's how you found the Golden Dawn mm -hmm. occult. One thing led to another. Found these tarot cards, which you said were tarot cards of Thoth, mm -hmm. which was the entity that was at the beginning of that secret book, right? Yes, it feels like one of those weird, like- No, yeah, but I'm just making sure that totally. everyone had it kind of mapped because yeah, Satan uses things and pieces them together and yeah. kind of like an upside down of what can be like a beautiful testimony of redemption is also like a testimony of, of darkness yes. for those that he's trying to lead astray. And so that's how all of those pieces kind of came together. So you're in this metaphysical shop, mm -hmm. see these tarot cards, you feel like they're glowing. They're created by this very, very evil so-called magician, mm -hmm. Alistair Crowley. You buy the tarot cards? Yes. And then what happens from there? Yeah, I just spent almost all of my time um, trying to take the images into my psyche, trying to really take this tarot deck in and started dreaming about them, started practicing tarot. And from that deck and the Alistair Crowley information is how I learned about the Golden Dawn really, um, how I got introduced and felt that definitely played a big part in me feeling like this was the next step, was joining this Golden Dawn and Alistair Crowley was in the Golden Dawn, the original Golden Dawn. And so I I really thought, okay, this is the most wicked man to ever live. I, I tried to make my own justifications of what's good and what is evil and mm. trying to say, well, I, I was going to join the Eastern Star. Um, I have family members that were involved in Freemasonry. And that was one of the things they're involved in. So that sounds good, but the symbol is of an upside down pentagram. So that that's bad, but the Golden Dawn has a has a cross symbol, in, mm. uh, at least a cross involved in the symbol. So that'd be good. But I kept mm. just- Interesting. Yes. Yeah, um, thinking that that, I, I just, it took me a while and a lot of back and forth Maneuvering. before really reaching out and, I, there was an order in my area. The original Golden Dawn ended a long time ago, but now there are people who have orders, and I was in LA at the time that had an order where they practiced the same magical system. And so reached out to them, and a man asked to meet him at a coffee shop in Silver Lake. And when we started talking, everything that he was saying to me was exactly what I'd been led to from astrology, Kabbalah, the uh, Egyptian deities, uh, tarot, all these things was exactly what I had been being led to, it was like, wow, this man's speaking my language. I can actually have a conversation with this person. Um, and I was really excited. And the words like, you were called to this uh, were used. So it just, it yeah. felt like I was about to get in on the secret club that my alien entities, my yeah. friends had been 
preparing me yeah. for. What were some other things that he was saying that resonated with you? It was really the way that he spoke in a very, like deep, esoteric way, talking about the great work. I, I'd been practicing alchemy, which has to do with the great work. Um, what's, what's the great work? It's kind of what they call the work of, um, of being in this magical order, you're, you're doing the great work. Alchemy is also called the great work. It has a lot to do with something called transmuting. We're taking gross matter and it's being transmuted to gold, but more in a, your soul allegedly is going from being on this lower level to you go through transmutation until you become basically gold. It's like demonic sanctification. Yes, yeah. yes. Okay. Um, and so it was really exciting for someone to, to be talking about the thing that I so deeply believed was my next step. Mm. This, so this is, the moment that you finally, all that I've been working toward, that I've been listening to, all of the, even the drugs that I've been doing, the mm -hmm. painting in my apartment, that has led me to this moment. It felt like divine providence. Yes. As you heard for yourself, Jack tells us she was led to the occult gradually. First, she became interested in aliens and then the new age, and eventually the new age led her to the occult. This is exactly how Lucifer guides souls away from God right into his corrupt teachings. What the occult teaches is what Lucifer has been promising since the fall of man, the forbidden knowledge that would make you a god. So many people fall for this deception. Lucifer has used this manipulation tactic since the beginning of it all. Lucifer can't grant you immortality. Only God could. What Lucifer's offering is rebellion against God, nothing else. Jack states that these demonic entities she was channeling guided her deeper into the occult. She explains that she will see things glowing and would know that the entities were guiding her in that direction. This is interesting to me and very important. With all my research into the occult, I have come to believe that some people are just born with the ability to see into the spiritual world. Just like God has chosen prophets, I believe Lucifer has done the same. People he can use to spread his ideas. This is what Aleister Crowley was, a prophet of the devil. And I believe this is what Jack was as well. Someone who can see into the spiritual world who was being used by the devil. Lucifer is using music, Hollywood, and many things of this world to take you off the path of salvation. Lucifer doesn't want you to be saved. He wants you to face a similar fate as his. He does it to get back at God and to prove that he can be a God himself. In another part of the interview, Jack talks about being initiated into the Golden Dawn inside of a Masonic Lodge. She then goes on to speak a bit about the rituals she was doing while a part of the organization. Um, I was asked to go to a Freemason Lodge to be initiated, and I was so excited. And um, I remember I was listening to the soundtrack for Phantasmic on the way there because I felt like all the sorcery and themes in Disney, I finally understood what they meant, and I was going to go mm. live it out um, for real, though. And wow. I, like I, I truly was afraid. I was just excited, and they had me. Um, yeah, when I got there, was a woman on the top of the stairs waiting for me in full black robe with a hood. And um, did that scare you at all, or were you kind of used to that kind of imagery? Yeah, I was. It made sense given the things I'd been studying and pouring my life into. I wasn't working at the time, other than you know DoorDash here and there. I was being supported by my family, so all my time went into wow. obsessively studying these things. Um, so it just made sense, uh, and I was put in a room. I was also put in a black robe. I had red socks and. I was told not so much to pray, but to meditate, to prepare myself for this, for this ritual. And the ritual itself, I was hoodwinked, so I couldn't see. And it was very dark. A lot of it had to do with taking John 1, 5 out of context. Um, the idea that you're going into the darkness to shine the light of knowledge in it, mm. the secret knowledge. A lot of uh, symbolism to do with duality, darkness and light, ancient Egyptian hermeticism. And there was a sword put to my neck, swearing that I would never share what I learned. A lot of scary. Uh, scary, very scary. I didn't think it was scary at the time. You this thought it was sacred. Yes. You thought it was serious. Yes. And I've also been in a sorority where they're, you know, they're similar like theatrics yeah. and don't tell anyone. Mm -hmm. so I, I remember telling one of them like, I'm not scared of, I went through something similar. But to me, again, it made sense. There was a heaviness to it. Like it felt like you're saying sacred, but, but yeah, so I was initiated. I took a lot of pride in thinking that I was again special, had called to this, and I continued going to the Masonic Lodge to do, uh, to practice, to learn, and there was a time where we spent 12 hour days for a couple of days, all just doing invocation rituals, sigils, um, learning hermetic magic. And I would have still said I was a Christian, wow. which is amazing. I would bow down to a golden idol before entering this room. I would, um, th these invocations of these demonic entities were, bowing my face down for golden idols and we'd take communion, it, it makes me emotional, but we take communion, we call it Eucharist, to Osiris, who's an Egyptian deity with bread and wine. And I, I thought I was getting close to Christ because that's what we were told. 
uh, we would use the name Jesus Christ, but this was someone that you become, someone that you attain to. I just thought I had a deeper understanding of what to be Christian, but I was worshiping demons and I was becoming more and more depraved. Actually, um, and in every other way, mm -hmm. my gender, uh, or not my gender, but my whole identity, I got involved in magic, um, which really came with it, the, what my belief, which is taught that the height of sexual, uh, you know, pleasure is a more powerful time to manifest. So it's just, if you go down to its core, how the original teaching is more so to practice it. Um, just absolutely wicked. I, are they like orgies? with people of all different kinds. I, I personally didn't partake in, in, um, in them with other people, but yeah. in my own, uh, in my own practice, right. um, was practicing that. So, because the thought is that like, as um, gives you greater access to the supernatural and you can more yes, effectively uh, manifest. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It's seen as a very powerful energy that at that point, if you hold in your mind, the thing that you're trying to manifest that that moment is the most powerful moment to manifest that. Also, I, I, I was very unhealthy from the drug use and all that, so I didn't personally have a cycle, but I really wanted to because the idea of menstrual blood is seen as powerful, powerful for re releasing and powerful blood in general, powerful for magical practices. So when I see people doing things like Christian rituals or, yeah. um, you know, seeing it as a, as a practice, as a something magical, it makes sense with the lies I was believing back then, which mm -hmm. is um, so upsetting. But when you really get into the occult and you see like the belief system regarding blood, blood. regarding well things regarding duality and fluidity and um none of what i'm seeing in the culture is surprising reminds me that it is once again a subversion version of what jesus said because mm. jesus spilled his own blood he gave his own flesh as a sacrifice once and for all that covers our sin the occult is saying you have to spill your blood you have to give your body to make a sacrifice mm. to whatever deity it is and in that you will receive the power to be your own god yes so it's this kind of as you said self-deification mm. self-worship and being your own savior which we hear that language a lot in non-occult spaces very like beautiful male empowerment spaces mm -hmm. we hear from people like glennon doyle we hear that from people like rachel hollis we hear from people like Bre brene brown mm -hmm. all these beautiful blonde wealthy successful women who seem to at least in some cases have great relationships that whether they're saying those words or not, they are saying the same message that you can get what you want by loving yourself enough mm -hmm. and by being your own leader being your own god following your you can basically manifest the life that you want and if you love yourself enough it will unlock all of these inner powers that you have inside to manifest good things is that a parallel that you see in the mainstream yes absolutely and knowing where it comes from is so disturbing because well one you know where it comes from it goes back to genesis 3 is that lie that you know you can be your own god and and for me learning the knowledge of good and evil your eyes will be opened and you come like god and also to what you're saying again the teaching was jesus is a type to become it diminishes jesus it cuts away his deity or that he's preeminent or the, tr the truth about who he is and instead it's self-empowerment and even whether it's your blood or someone else's blood again stripping from the bible that it has power and so much of what we were doing in that freemason ritual room was taking the bible like we would during rituals use a psalm like a psalm psalm 51 i believe in mm. latin or um uh, Kabbalah and Gematria basically says, you know, the Bible, yes, but you have to read it in code and the Hebrew letters have numerical value and all this, sec the Bible becomes secret knowledge mm -hmm. and uh, doing banishing rituals, saying the names of God, like the Hebrew names of God and the Lord's prayer uh, to perform occult rituals, um, just trying to take as though also the ritual room was set up like the tabernacle. So it's like taking from the Bible and trying to suck power for me, like I want to make my own will be done. There's power here, mm. and then totally perverting the Bible again to make you God. It's truly Luciferianism at heart, mm -hmm. and uh, was so uh, entrapped because thinking, no, we are using the Bible and learning the names of God and Hebrew and all these things. I am a Christian. I just have the secret knowledge. You don't. Um, and so again, if you would have, I would have talked about Jesus, God. Um, the Bible, being a Christian, but my definitions of all those terms and the way that I was practicing it was yeah. opposed to God and completely different. Talk about Christ consciousness. Mm -hmm. Yes, that, yeah, that, that goes into the same idea that words to be more with the new age, but the idea that Christ is like, like this consciousness, like a little God mm -hmm. and attaining to the highest form of humanity or even transcending that. As you heard for yourself, Jack tells us she was sent to a Masonic lodge to join the Order of the Golden Dawn. She explains that she took an oath to protect the order's secret, 
After she became a member, she was taught many rituals, including invocation rituals to channel these deities, even stating that they had a version of taking communion where they would take communion dedicated to the pagan god Osiris. If you have been watching this channel for some time now, you should already know who Osiris is. Osiris is a part of the Egyptian unholy trinity. Isis, Osiris, and Horus. These three gods are worshipped by most of the occult, especially those who follow Aleister Crowley. This right here shows the devil in the details. See, Lucifer only knows one trick, inverting what God already made. Lucifer takes God's teachings and inverts it to manipulate you to do the opposite of what God commands you to do. That's why these occultists are using the Bible and religious practices to worship themselves instead of the true God. Jack also explains how the Order of the Golden Dawn taught his followers not to follow Christ, but to become your own version of Christ, your own savior. Again, this goes back to the forbidden knowledge and choosing to be your own God. That's what the occult teaches his followers. I have seen so many people claim that we are God or claiming that they can achieve Christ consciousness. The thing is, we are not gods and we will never be gods. There is only one true God. As you can see, God was right and Lucifer was wrong. Eating from the tree of knowledge only led to death, just like God warned us it would. It only caused the corruption of man and the fall of man in every way. It turned man against each other and made them greedy, violent, and evil. Lucifer didn't tell Eve about this. He only told her that she would be as a god. Jack also talks about channeling spirits and allowing these spirits to control her, even stating that she would allow these spirits to see through her eyes, essentially allowing herself to become possessed. This is what we see many celebrities admitting to all the time. Many of these actors and celebrities admit that they open themselves up to spirits and energy to take over them and use them to make them perform better. Than, than I expected. And Sasha was in full effect. Sasha is my alter ego. When people see me, sometimes I think that when they meet me and they speak with me, they're expecting Sasha. I'm really kind of shy and not really shy, but more reserved. Nothing like Sasha. Can, she can do things that I cannot do when I'm in rehearsal. I mean, I can try, but then it just doesn't happen. I can sing notes and sing strong and do all these things that when I'm just by myself, I can't do. I remember right before I performed, I raised my hands up and it was kind of the first time I, I felt something else come into me. Sasha Fierce, when did she show up? Usually when I hear the crowd, when I yeah. put on my stilettos, um, when, like, the, the moment right before when you're nervous and, and that other thing kind of takes over. Was, got on my knees and sort of communicated with the spirits. And when I came out, I was in charge. Proceed. Powerful scene. It, it was, I couldn't have acted that. I couldn't have written that. I remember sometime we do 10 episodes of my show and this last season, I was hitting a block. Like, I was like, oh, I'm not doing it right, right? So then I went in the corner and then I was looking at the wall and I was like, come on devil, come on devil, right? Come to me, like come to me. Cause I had to do something like crazy, right? Had nightmares for a month. So it does come it right? after, yeah. like okay. nightmares every day. Like, I just felt, felt that energy, you know? And I had to pray and do all this stuff to like get rid of it. And you call your mom up and you're like, you're back to life. And mm -hmm. that stuff is real. That stuff really... These characters, because it's very spiritual what we do as actors. You're on the set, you have your chakras all open, you're allowing this character to use your body as a vessel. Mm -hmm. and, and, and so you have to learn how to flip the switch on and flip it off. Otherwise, it'll drive you mad. Mm -hmm. I mean, <laughs> because, no, because it, it's spiritual what we do, you yes. understand? Yeah. We allow these characters and these stories to use our bodies as a vessel. That is, that is a real... Mm -hmm. Like, if you think about it, that's you allowing this other energy. What do you think they're talking about? They're referring to spirit channeling and and demonic possession. This is what the Order of the Golden Dawn was teaching his followers. In another part of the interview, Jack tells us how she was saved by God and made her way out of all of this evil. Um, how did you get out of the occult and okay. come to Christ? Yeah, um, well, I was deep into practicing that. It was my whole life and I, I just had moments of realizing how depraved I was. There was a moment where I, I looked in the mirror again and I heard this voice saying, it's crazy how evil becomes you, but it was this voice that was not my own. Ugh. And it was very uh, upsetting to say the least, but I had thought this might be evil what I'm doing. I don't really know, but I can just go back to doing what's right later. Like I thought there's a difference between doing something that might be evil and being evil, but it was in that moment I realized like who I am inside, it's like constantly doing evil things. Like there's, this is way worse than I thought. And 
Again, in the order, we were practicing uh, things that involve the Bible, and I just read the Bhagavad Gita, which is a Hindu text as it is, which is a very, very long, basically their scripture with commentary. So I was very prideful thinking, I read that, I might as well read the Bible, it's just another, it's just another one of sacred text, and there must be something to it because that's what we're using here. And I read that you can tell a tree by its fruit. I probably was in Matthew 7, and I didn't really know what that meant, but I knew it pierced me that the fruit of the people in this order, including me, but even the highest up in the order, they're just as depraved as me. And then another thing was I read uh, in 2 Corinthians 11, 14, that Satan masquerades as an angel of light. And I kept thinking, how can this be bad? It's light work. We're uh, making excuses, but when I read that, I realized, no, Satan is behind this. Um, I, I always felt that down, but I wanted to find out for myself. I, I didn't mention this, but I had these abduction experiences. Um, well, one abduction experience, multi contact experiences, and the abduction was the first time that I thought maybe these are evil, uh, very scary things. So that there'd been that little bit of doubt that made me think uh, maybe evil was behind this. And that verse, again, pierced my heart where I realized, no, Satan is behind what I'm doing. But I was still so prideful that I didn't turn from my, what I was doing. Um, and then one night, I remembered Genesis 3. I, I just remembered that the lie, the lie in the garden was that if you eat from the tree of the knowledge of good and evil, your eyes will be opened and you'll be like God knowing good and evil. And I just knew that Satan is behind this. It led to the fall. It wasn't actually a good thing. And it's leading to a great fall in my life. I was so lost. And then one night um, in my studio apartment, it was just any other night and I was walking across and I was spiritually attacked, which would happen. And I fell on my knees and it felt like my soul was being sucked out in just utter darkness and I had no control over it. And I cried out, Jesus Christ save me. And um, and I meant it. And in that moment, just like that, I felt the peace that I'd been longing for my entire life. I knew that it was the God of the Bible, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit who, who saved me, who delivered me from that attack and that it was not hard for him. All that darkness that I was tied up in that I thought I would never escape, it was not hard for him to deliver me from. Mm. And I was shaking because I realized if the God of the Bible is real, which he is, then he says that sorcery is an abomination and divination, all these practices that I'm doing, this is scary. So I held my Bible and I started reading it, uh, still thinking I had the secret knowledge, but it didn't matter because as I was reading it, it was like I was being filled, like I was actually eating. As you heard for yourself, Jack lets us know that it took for her to be spiritually attacked, for her to cry out for Jesus. Jesus then began healing her heart, and she was able to make her way out of the grasp of the devil. This rarely happens as those who are into the occult join because of their love of sin. Jack, who had been consumed by sin, called out for God, and he responded, God never gives up on us. We give up on ourselves. God was waiting for her the whole time and responded to her cause. No matter how deep Satan thinks he got you, it's nothing for God. The only thing is, we need to want God's help and obey his instructions. I believe this is one of the most important stories I have told on this platform. It's a story we barely get to hear. Jack's testimony is pure and a great representation of God's power. Jack admits she was deep into sin, using substances and drinking all the time, even practicing rituals and sacrifices. None of that mattered to the Lord who saved her. If you're one of the people that wonder why I expose the music industry so much, this is the reason why. Lucifer has hijacked the music industry in Hollywood. He is using it to push his message of self-worship, the same message that caused the fall. Sadly, he has manipulated the population convincing them they are their own gods. This is why evil is thriving today. People are following idols that serve Lucifer. It's time to wake up and see the truth. Don't allow the evil to guide you away from God like they did to Jack. If you're one of the lost souls watching this, this video is especially for you. Please hear me out. I know it's hard, but you must stop following these idols to a burning end. You must wake up and accept the truth and realize that you're running out of time. No matter what Lucifer gives you, he can never give you what God can give you, eternal life and salvation. Well, I'm gonna end this one here. But before you guys go, I just wanted to ask you to like, comment, and share this video so others may see the truth. I want to thank you all for watching, and I'll see you guys in the next one.